Hey everyone, my name is Sinead. I graduated the IB in 2019 and one of my HLs was HL Physics and uh, miraculously I got a 7 in HL Physics and in this video I'm going to be talking to you guys about how you can study physics efficiently. Physics was probably my favorite subject during the IB and so I did like pour a lot of time into it. A lot of time which, you know, I could have been spending more efficiently but I would just be like reading lots of random things, taking notes on a bunch of things, which I realized that at the end of the day, when it comes to IB physics, you can go down a rabbit hole about something that's like really interesting, but won't actually help you for the exam. I've been tutoring physics for a while now, and I'm currently helping out my sister who's going through the IB program, and she's taking HL physics, but she doesn't like it as much. She's not as big of a physics fan as me. And so I've been working with her to try and create the most efficient study program for her so that she can still achieve the highest that she is capable of without having to uh, waste so much time in the field as I did. So today I'm going to be talking you through that method and just giving you some tips in general for how you can study physics efficiently. I'm going to caveat this by saying this is just a study technique that works for me, you know, take what you want, leave the rest, up to you. Okay, we're going to first start off by talking about some study principles. Study principle number one. The 80-20 rule. The 80-20 rule, if you're not familiar with it, can be applied to a lot of different situations where essentially 80% of the results are going to come from 20% of the work. And how can we apply this to studying? Well, this is the IB Physics HL book. It is a fat monster. By the end of the year, you're going to have to be tested on all of this crap. But do you actually? Not really, because they can't test you on everything. There's only probably going to be like a small portion of this book that you're actually going to be tested on. Like for example, this nature of science stuff, they never really test you on that. It's just, they're just trying to make you interested in the topic. But even like the hardcore stuff that they do put in the syllabus, if there's like three bullet points for a subtopic, they may only test one. And it's important to note that there are some topics which are repeatedly tested after year after year, which you definitely need to know. And so what we want to learn from the 80-20 principle is that we really want to focus on doing that 20% works, which will get us 80% of the results and figuring out like what are the key core concepts in here which are going to take me far and not fret as much of that of those other extra marks which could you know get you that extra 20% if you know what I mean. Okay the second study principle I want to talk about is active recall. This is crucial for IB physics. If you don't know what active recall is I suggest you watch this video up here. It's helped a lot of kids understand what active recall is. Active recall is basically an active study technique where you really try to pull information from your brain rather than try to stuff information back inside your brain. So whenever you're studying physics, you want to make sure you're being as active as possible because when you are being active, you're getting more stuff done naturally. Please don't spend hours just reading this book because that's passive. You can check out more about active recall in my video. The second study principle I want to talk about, which is going to make you a lot more efficient, is spaced repetition. If I could go back in time and tell young Sinead doing physics one thing, it would be spaced repetition because the IV is a marathon, right? It's a very long process. And by the end of the two years, you're going to be tested on stuff that you learned in term one. How the heck are you going to remember that? The key to putting that information into your long-term memory is using active recall, but in a spaced fashion. You don't want to just do your mechanics, study mechanics really hard, and then forget about it until the time the exam comes. It's going to be really important for you to be continually revising stuff so that when it comes to the exam period, you don't have to relearn everything. Now, that can seem like a bit of a chore, but it doesn't take that much revision to be effective. Just a little bit of revision spaced throughout your studying will save you a lot of time when it comes to the exam because you won't have to relearn everything again. You know, even if you just do like, 30 minutes of revision a week for past topics that you did, that's already probably going to be enough. Okay, so those are some general tips about studying efficiently. Now we're going to specifically talk about the IB physics program. Firstly, I want to talk about the nature of physics itself. I'm going to get a bit meta here. So the weird thing about physics is that you're learning about stuff that you're not unfamiliar with. With a lot of subjects, the difficulty comes from not actually having any tangible experience or awareness of the topic. Like learning about World War II is going to be difficult if you've never studied it before. But then when it comes to science, it's not like students are unaware about the motion of objects. It's not like we have no idea what heat is. It's not like anyone doesn't know what electricity is. It's not like we have never seen a ball fly up and down before. But it's that a lot of the mental models that we have in our heads for how these things actually work are wrong. 
Not all of them, some physics concepts are intuitive, but a lot of them can be tricky. And examiners know this, they purposely write exam questions and put the intuitive answer there because they know that a lot of people are going to circle it. And they want to give the marks to people who are able to think past their intuition and actually use reason and logic to try and come to a justified conclusion about what the answer to the question would be. And so if you're going to study physics, one key habit that you want to develop is to be able to challenge your intuition. You never want to just assume something, you always want to derive it from first principles. Physics is one of those subjects where you can always go a level deeper as to why something is the way it is, until there's just a point where it's like, okay, that's just the way it is, at which point you've reached the first principle. And so where I see a lot of students get stuck is that they spend so much time fighting with their intuition. They think that, no, this feels like the answer. Why is it this? And so I encourage you to do whilst you're studying IB Physics is to challenge your intuition. Never just assume because this feels like the answer it should be. And when you get something wrong, you have to have the humility to be able to accept that, oh yeah, I'm wrong, okay, well, how do you actually do it? I personally think that physics students can often be the most arrogant out of the science students because physics students always think that their subject is the best and that they're smarter than everyone else. Biology is just memorizing, chemistry is just easy physics. But if you want to be efficient when you're studying, you can't be arrogant. You have to have humility and patience and just accept that like you're going to be wrong a million times before you're going to be right. Because that's how it is, right? Like, I'm not a perfect physics student. I don't understand how everything moves in the way that it does. I've just gotten things wrong a lot more times than other people have and learned from that. Through doing the exams and asking questions and like doing IA reports, I've had a lot more time and experience to learn from everything that I messed up with. There's so much time wasted in social anxiety about how good you are at a subject. There's a lot of time wasted in being sad about things that you got wrong. What made me really efficient as a student is that I didn't care, I didn't cry if I got something wrong. You just, oh, wrong, okay, let's, wow, what, how do we answer this then? Let's move, let's figure this out so we can move on, you know? Having the humility to be able to admit that you're wrong and figure out what the answer is is gonna make you a lot faster. Okay, now I wanna move on to talking about stuff that's a bit more tactical. So this is the thing about physics. Physics is very interconnected and layered. There's so much interconnection between the subjects. Measurements and uncertainties and mechanics are the foundation for everything. Circular motion builds on top of mechanics, and then gravitation ties with circular motion, and then that HL topic fields builds right on top of that. The fields thing also builds on top of electricity and magnetism. There's also a lot of connections between atomic physics and chemistry. Atomic physics and mechanics kind of go head to head, but for the most part, everything is very interconnected. And it's also very layered, where there's foundations and then things that are built on top of foundations. This is why it's very important to build strong foundations before you move on to the next subject. I think what wastes a lot of kids' time is that they didn't spend enough time building their foundation in the beginning, which means that doing the later topics is very difficult. Not because it's difficult, but just because they have a lot of holes from mechanics that they didn't fill. So I was in the middle of building an IB question bag. You can check it out in the description below. And I was trying to figure out how to organize the questions. Originally, I wanted to organize them in terms of like easy, medium, hard. But then I realized that that doesn't really work out because it's kind of hard to differentiate the difficulty of the question. Because what I realized is that how difficult it's going to be is going to be based off how much prior knowledge that you had. And so what I realized the best thing to do was when organizing these questions was to just arrange them by subtopic. Because if you go on the IB guidelines and you read the syllabus, what you realize is that the subtopics are organized very nicely such that each subtopic builds on another. For example, you may be having problems with the wave problem, but the reason why you're having problems with it may not be because it's difficult, but because it's from 4.3 and you still don't understand 4.1. So it's gonna be difficult for you to understand the 4.3 questions when you don't get the 4.1 question. And so what I did is that I arranged all of the questions according to subtopic is to go through these questions by subtopic and make sure you have a thorough understanding of the subtopic before you move on to the next one. If you're having problems, maybe go back a subtopic and try to see if there's any holes that you can fill. The syllabus is your friend. Do not use the textbook as a syllabus. This is a very bad syllabus to follow. The syllabus will literally tell you everything that you need to know. And so when you're studying, I would always have that by me so I can know, oh, I'm covering this dot point today. So what I would do if I was studying physics, again, I would get the syllabus, I would go to the chapter that I was studying. Let's say I'm doing mechanics for some reason. I would start with each of the subtopics, 2.1 motion. And I would just learn everything that I could about that subtopic. And then I would go and do the practice questions from 2.1. Because the thing with the IB questions is that you can categorize them all based off subtopic. Like there's some from 2.1, 2.2, 2.3. And then after I'm done those, I would move on to the next subtopic. I would read 
the title and then I would like go and Google and like figure out what figure out what like the main concepts are, what the formulas do, like just basically get a you know, a brief like foundational understanding of what things mean. Go and do the questions and then just repeat. When I got to the exams, what I did is that I took the syllabus and I summarized it all and I put all of the topics into this long list and I went through them and I ticked off which topics I thought I understood and topics that I didn't think I understand, I put a little circle. Basically just trying to fill all of the gaps in my knowledge. Going through, watching YouTube videos, doing the practice problems, working with my tutor. And yeah, that's what I would do if I was studying the content for the first time. Another thing that I would suggest is that if you are scared to do the practice problems, I completely understand. They are very difficult. But what I would advise you to do is that I would advise you to just start with paper one. Paper one is hard because you're only given an hour to do it. But if you're just studying for the first time, paper one is a great way to test your knowledge because it's just multiple choice. I would only move on to paper two once I had a full grasp of the topic because paper two essentially makes use of all of the subtopics whilst paper one only really tests one subtopic at a time. Sometimes they mix stuff up but for the most part they're testing one subtopic. If you're looking for an IB question bag which organizes the questions by topic. Okay so if you understand that and you're doing all of the things that I said, then you should be good. Now I'm gonna be talking about how you can use your teacher and your tutor to become even more efficient. What I've seen waste a lot of time in IB physics is when you get stuck on a problem and you have no idea how to answer it and you spend like three hours researching how do you answer this problem. That wasted so much time for me. I would just be like on Google for ages, never could find an answer, waste an hour searching up how this could be the way that it is. And sometimes you don't even get the answer, which is the worst part. So this is why I would recommend a tutor. If you want to learn more about my thoughts on tutoring in general, you can check out this video over here. So basically what I did to avoid spending hours and hours and hours wasting my time trying to figure out a question is that when I got stuck, I would use my phone or I would take a screenshot on my iPad and save the question that I was having trouble with in a separate file. And then I would bring all these questions to either my physics teacher or my tutor. I would have like 10 or something. And then I would just go through them all in like an hour. If I found that I had like a huge hole in my knowledge, which like it happens, then we would work through the concepts and really try to rebuild my knowledge back up. This is the strategy that I use when I'm tutoring physics. I don't want to waste time with my students lecturing at them, stuff that they could watch on YouTube. I like to actually be doing some action in my tutoring sessions. And so most of the time we were just going through the questions that my students have problems with. So basically what we'll do is I'll try and break down the problem for them and try and explain it in a way that they understand. I won't just force feed the answer down your throat. If you have a tutor or teacher, don't let them just force feed you the answer. I'll actually take time with my students to try and rephrase the question, give them a hint so that they can try and figure it out for themselves. That way we're engaging in active recall and active learning and that way they actually remember what they learned. So that's what I do with my students. I also do that with the teachers. I find that to be very efficient because then you're not wasting time having a mental breakdown over how to solve a problem. And so basically the idea is that if you just repeat this over and over again, you doing your questions by yourself, going to your teacher when you have problems, eventually if you just keep working at it, you're going to get to the point where the questions actually feel all pretty familiar, you can get enough points that you need to get a 7, and you can call yourself a physics master. Well, maybe not a master, but you try. Don't waste time on being stuck for too long. Don't waste time writing notes. Don't waste time watching interesting physics videos. Unless you enjoy them, then that's fine. But if you want to be efficient, do as little as possible to maximize your marks. Getting that loop of question, uh-oh, I got it wrong, and go, Fill that gap in my knowledge. Write down some notes on the things that you got wrong. That's helpful. Not notes on things that you already know, like force equals mass time acceleration. No. Notes on, oh, next time I should try this technique. That can actually be helpful. As I was saying, getting in that feedback loop where you're continuously, you know, getting feedback on what you're doing wrong and how you can improve and blah, blah, blah. That's going to really help you and that's going to really take you to the next level. And if you work hard enough at it, Potential of getting a 7. I did it. It's not impossible. Many kids have done it in the past. IB physics is hard, don't get me wrong, but it can be quite fun after a while. Because with physics, especially as you get towards the end, you just see everything come together and it's this beautiful magical thing when you can just like look up and be like, oh, mechanics and circular motion, fields, everything connects. And then you can go and watch Interstellar and understand what's happening with this black hole thing. You can understand how rockets work a little bit. IB physics was my favorite subject. I love tutoring in it. And so yeah, I wish you the best of luck in your physics journey. If you're looking for a tutor in IB physics, I'm going to leave the link to my website down below. Other than that, good luck. See you next time. Bye.